So something weird have happened just yesterday. So let's start with the business side of it. So strategically, this failure does not have any significance on SpaceX businesses. Its customers payload is intact. It's a successful mission in terms of its primary objectives. The payload is currently heading towards the International Space Station. So uh, from a customer point of view, from a business strategic point of view, this failure would not have any significant impact on SpaceX businesses. But it is still a very weird failure. So I was, I live in Singapore, most of you guys know this. I live in Singapore and at the time when the launch was uh, happening, I was sound asleep. I had no idea that this particular mission has any remote possibility of failure. It is weird in many aspects. First of all, this is a routine that SpaceX has done many times before. It is called CRS-16 because this is the 16th mission SpaceX has ever performed. Uh, for International Space Station. And every time it's the same thing. You send the payload from the ground to the International Space Station. So this is a routine SpaceX has done tens of times in the past. That's the first, re first reason why this failure is kind of weird. The second reason is that if you look across SpaceX uh, launches in the past, there are different types of launches SpaceX has performed. So there are ones uh, that are for International Space Station, there are ones that are for the low Earth orbit, there are ones that are for geostationary transfer orbit, and because of the differences in the orbits, obviously, obviously the speed the vehicle gets to also differs. For example, for most low Earth orbit missions, including the, uh, this one today, the, the one that failed at landing, the first stage usually gets gets to around 6,000 kilometers per hour of speed before it separates from the second stage, which basically means the maximum speed the booster gets to is around 6,000 kilometers per hour. For the one that happened today, it got to, I think, 5,500 kilometers per hour. So it is not the fastest speed SpaceX has ever slowed the vehicle down from. So if you compare that to geostationary transfer orbit missions, usually the booster gets to around 8,000 kilometers per hour before uh, it is slowed down and uh, landed safely on Earth. The hardest SpaceX has ever done actually is the booster for the center booster for Falcon Heavy. So for that particular mission, the center booster has got to 9,500 kilometers per hour. So it's it's much faster. It's traveling at, at a much faster speed than the booster that failed today. That particular booster for Falcon Heavy did fail blastically uh, about a few hundred kilometers away from the landing pad. But this one today is much slower than the center booster Falcon Heavy. So that's the second reason why this failure is kind of weird. So the third reason why this failure is weird is because of the payload. This payload today weighs around 3,000 kilograms. So it's three metric tons, but the highest, if you compare all SpaceX launches in the past, the highest SpaceX has ever achieved is a launch I think happened just a few months ago, which uh, the payload weighs around 10 ton. That's three times uh, the weight of today's payload. So yes, this is a pretty unexpected failure. People at SpaceX did not expect this, neither did I. If I were to bet on any SpaceX mission that will experience a failure, I would never bet on this one. It's such a routine job. The payload wasn't that heavy. The speed the first stage got to isn't that fast either. The landing shouldn't be a problem. This is an unexpected failure. Yet, it happened. So I guess it is what it is. SpaceX got, got to investigate into this issue and see, you know, really what happened. Is it because it's so routine that people just become negligent? It might be a possibility. So we don't know. So let's have a discussion in the comment section down below. Let me know what do you think and uh, uh, how will this affect SpaceX? How will this affect Falcon 9? We know currently that uh, the first stage is intact. It will be perhaps ascending Starlink satellites in the future, so there is a good plan for this failed booster. Uh, let me know what you think.